Excellent. Thank you very much for having us. Um, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Daniel Rukari. I'm one of the professors at Holt International Business School. I'm excited to be here to share a bit of insights from industry, something different from the conventional presentations that you've had. So with that, I'll hand over to Liliana to introduce herself and then to kick off our presentation. Yes. Liliana. Hello everyone, thank you Daniel. And as, uh, as Daniel mentioned, we are here to bring a completely different uh, point of view. It is about uh, collaboration between industry and, and kind of looking, uh, bring, bringing the business perspective, but also from academic perspective, what we can do to make and, and drive growth into the business. I'm Liliana Kamakan, I'm uh, coming with a quiet experience in a business environment working in companies like Unilever or Tata Consumer Products and recently joined Halt International Business School. So our uh, topic of today is looking into how we generate or how company can generate and drive future-proofing growth and we bring you a case study from a company from Saudi Arabia uh, the biggest telecom company from there and how basically they pivot from uh, whatever used to be and the way they're driving the business and how we implement some also some models which we feel that can be useful for any, any other companies. Um, so starting, we usually start with a quote and I think that fits very well with the environment and the context we are doing business today. So the best way to predict the future is to create it. Um, and that's ba basically fitting very well with, uh, with the results of a study done by McKenzie some time ago, looking to the economic profit growth and what are the companies able to drive this growth. Um, and basically what had been acknowledged is that 60% of the companies sit into that middle part, which is plus minus 1%. But there is a 20% a of the companies able to drive uh, outstanding and exponential growth. So then the question is, how it can be, you know, what, how a company can transition into that, uh, that part of the curve and that's somehow our case study and what we'd like to share with you today. Of course, nobody wants to be in the, in the other 20% uh, with a, you know, high accelerated decline. So question is, and I think very interesting for all of us, how to transition from this stagnant position to, uh, to an accelerated growth. What companies will need to do to move into that, uh, that 20%? And basically, based on various researches, had been identified few areas of focus. One, it is look into the trends and capitalize the growth which can be brought by special, some specific trends. Uh, another key area it is you know, identify that big moves in the context and transformation. How it can really drive differentiation within, um, you know, by various companies within different industries. And last but not least, how it can create a future-proofing portfolio. And we are going to spend a bit more time you know, showcasing how a, a big company very much focused on one single type of product succeed to pivot and extend their, um, their business and, um, and drive growth and moving from, you know, stagnant position to a growing, growing one, creating value and uh, also drive this, implement the digital transformation, which we know it's, it's very important. Of course, there are a wide range of trends uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with, so we'll not spend too much time. In, uh, in getting into details, just want to highlight some of them. Data and digitalization, big trend, important for all businesses, need to embed. Um, probably you'll say, yes, we know this. Not, not all the business are really embedding this and, and driving this, uh, you know, for, so, uh, so uh, at the heart of the business and what they do. High, um, high business agility, moving ability to move and, and really focus on different parts of the business uh, rather than the core and transition and, and capture that areas which are able to drive um, higher growth. Hyper segmentation and, and customer um, experience. So that's another very important aspect which needs to be into, uh, taken into account. Customers, as we know, they do expect things which are made for them. So, so a different way to engage with, uh, with them, something which is uh, you know, very, very important. And ecosystems and, and partnership, just uh, talking with, uh, with the next speaker, when he mentioned that we'll be talking about collaboration. We know sometimes we, we are afraid of collaboration and creating partnerships. I think that's a fundamental aspect which needs to be taken into account uh, these days. And let's not forget, we live in a world where inequality and social pressure are quite big and environmental impact um, needs to be considered by companies. So these are kind of key big trends which uh, when you think of the business transformation really need to be taken into account. That's the way how a company can drive future proofing portfolio. 
but not only this. There are a few other things which uh, we can look into. One it is how we can create value. We really drive and accelerate this value creation and move from um, you know, a core of your business to something which may drive growth on a longer term. Um, agile allocation of resources, sometimes companies do prefer to focus on a certain type of business and not necessarily transition into other uh, direction and able to implement you know, and have an impact on, on different side, other sides of the business. Uh, and last but not least, this digital transformation and using data to, to drive you know, better engagement with the customers. In order to achieve this, uh, based on, on our research, um, definitely driving this um, ambidextrous business structure is what very, very important to look into and what, for example, in the last year, um, STC done, uh, done very successful. What is this about? Very much it's optimizing the existing core of the business, make sure this is in good shape to generate higher profit and, and growth, but also making sure they start transitioning towards other parts of the, of, the, of the business and drive faster growth and, uh, and accelerate this transition. And last but not least, definitely differentiate through um, some innovations which will be able to capitalize and drive further growth. But having taken this into account, um, basically we developed a model anchored in qualitative and quantitative research, but I'll pass over to Daniel to get into some further details. Thank you very much, Liliana. Um, there are a couple of things. Uh, Liliana has talked about ambidextrous business models, doing two things at the same time. We have been looking at research from 1610 and how companies from 1610 have been able to transition. I'll repeat that here again, 1610. So the question is going to be how do you build models? So we have built a model and this can be used in terms of uh, qualitative and quantitative where we identify or companies identify their core value and their core value must be identified by more than one matrix. It cannot be revenue contribution. It might be brand equity. It might be the user base that is not yet commercialized or monetized. So you've got to be able to understand the transitions from the core value and you move on to what we call incremental value. That increment, the move, the shift or the transition allows for mitigated or mitigating of risk. And then you've got to be able to understand the radical value. And I'll show you examples of what uh, we did with STC, which is a dominant player in a market with majority of the market share of around about 80%. So this is a model. The biggest part is that most businesses know where they want to go. The question is going to be how they build transition strategies to achieve that particular move. So then we look at STC. So this is some, STC is a Saudi-based telecoms company uh, and basically there's some, uh, the total company value is around about just 10.6 billion. That is increasing by 16%. So it's not a small company by any means. And what they've got, in, which is interesting, is that they're opening up the economy. So they're opening it up to new players. So the question is going to be how versatile are they to be able to respond to some of the new emerging um, competitors. This here provides a move or a shift to show how STC has moved over from 1999. And there are some big points. So in 2016, they started increasing, uh, they started looking, uh, 2018, sorry, they started looking at going into new markets. They started looking at expanding out of Saudi Arabia. If you look at uh, 2019, there was also a move and shift to new portfolios. And this has allowed them to be better prepared to, to respond not only to the new challenges that emerge, but to also be, as, as Abraham Lincoln said, to be in control of what the future looks like. You cannot allow others to predict or to control what your future will look like. So this here just provides a snapshot of the transition that STC has gone through. Now, STC is a very interesting company. They themselves are very keen on trying to develop their own capabilities. They have designed a strategy they call there, and they've looked at, and you can see that this might also be linked to some of the um, trends that Liliana uh, talked about earlier. So you've got the aspect of digitalization, and the question is going to be how is that achieved? It's one thing to know that you're going to do that. It's another to be able to implement that. Then the, the, the aspect of the new emerging monetization aspect of what we call the experience economy. 
how are you going to be able to monetize that experience economy? That's a new area that most businesses must have a look at in terms of monetizing. I actually predict that most products will be obsolete in terms of monetization in the next couple of years. In fact, we're already seeing that happen. Obviously then, you've got to be able to ask yourself, what will lead to this accelerated growth? The accelerated growth is interesting because it provides that ambidextrous aspect. How are you managing your core uh, business operations while looking to accelerate in the future? And obviously, then you've got to be able to look into those radical areas of expansion and scaling. Now, STC has linked their strategy to what we call, uh, what, what they have, which is a 2030 vision. Now, that is very important because I do not want to call it a PPP because it is not, but it looks like. However, the facilitation of STC's strategy is linked to the vision 2030. That transition, as you can see here, talks about, looks to the elements of, for example, I'll just pick one, where they say increase private sector contribution from 40% to 65% of GDP. In other words, they're making the private sector the biggest contributor of economic activity in that particular economy. So the question is, where do you support? Who do you support? Where do the resources and the infrastructure support? Where is that anchored? That would be anchored within the private sector. The question is going to be, who are those players that receive that particular structured support? I, I, I listened to Prime Minister's question times today morning, and that was a bit depressing, so I'm trying to get over that. <laughs> However, having said that, you can clearly see that the link between the macro dynamics and the, uh, the, the micro dynamics are clear in terms of their strategy. And that then leads to the, the ability for them to be able to get specific um, incentives. Now, uh, we, we thought let us extract some of the um, um, STC portfolio to be able to demonstrate what we were talking about earlier. You see, you can see their core value was sat in landline and mobile phone network. They have now moved into new areas, incremental value, and that has gone into areas around Kuwait. And they've been very, very, in fact, the last conversation was around about using of satellite technology and stuff like that. But what is important as well is that this portfolio has allowed them to move into radical areas. They have moved into financial solutions. They have moved into cloud computing, smart TV, data, and AI. Now, that radical shift has opened up new monetization strategies for them or monetization options or opportunities for their particular business. And this is anchored in strategic business units that their business has. These strategic business units, or cost centers or profit centers, have allowed STC to be able to transition. And you can see how they're moving into areas around um, um, fiber optics. They're moving into fixed line um, 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 automation. And that has allowed them to get into 5G, the infrastructure, that they can then leverage within the particular region. I just want to show you some data as well, because as we wrap up, this shows you from 2018 how their business has been growing. Now, this to them is pretty much what we call the incremental or core business. The question is going to be, how can they transition as they move forward into new areas that allow them to be able to grow both their revenues, because it's one thing to grow your revenues, the next is whether you're growing your actual EBITDA. That is where the, the, the gist of the matter sits. And you can see that they've constantly grown it. And for the period between um, 2018 to 2021, that has been an increase of around about 15.2%. Any business that is growing at that rate is worthy of using as a case study. <laughs> With that, I'd like us to come to the end of our presentation. We have a couple of takeaways. Uh, identifying mechanisms to op optimize your core. Your core cannot be anchored in only revenue. It has got to be anchored in whatever value that you have. In fact, we say there's a difference between value creation and value capture. I have seen most businesses trying to create new value, yet they have not optimized or captured the existing value that they have. Number two, to build those transition capabilities. Businesses know where to go. The question is going to be how they do that. Third, you've got to be able to identify those incremental value opportunities. And fifth, there's that disruptive capability. 
the word disruptive became a buzzword without many people understanding how to achieve it. It can be both high end or lower end. We suggest that you identify the most appropriate method for your particular industry. With that, we'd like to say thank you very much for listening to us and we uh, will take any questions. If not, we'll say thank you very much for listening. Be around if there are some questions later. <laughs>